Thanks for clicking. My name is Mark Mitchell. I'm a mortgage broker here in London, Ontario. China's property collapse had some very interesting updates this week as we start to get an idea how these distressed developers are going to be dealing with international investors. Evergrande, which really started the Chinese property crisis, Am I whining about it? got into a bit of a spat with foreign investors as it became increasingly clear that Beijing is running the show. Beijing, beyond stepping into a more direct role with Evergrande, continued to loosen its monetary policy as it sought to reverse the effects of the, of the worsening real estate crisis throughout China. And then in other more international news, the Federal Reserve signaled on Wednesday that it would be tightening its monetary policy, which is going to be, make things even worse for the Chinese property crisis. So what I want to do today is go over some developments with Evergrande, as there's big news on how they are dealing with international investors and who is actually calling the shots in the real estate crisis. Run companies. Then we'll move on to Beijing's increasingly loose monetary policy, which is more and more looking like it's moving in the opposite direction of us in the West. Then I want to move on to the West and the Federal Reserve's increasingly tight monetary policy and how this could, in fact, make matters worse in China, which I think is going to be increasingly prevalent throughout 2022 as the cost of borrowing rises while China, China's real estate developers are simultaneously in a credit crunch. We do have some updates coming out next week as we get the January real estate data and we start to see even more effects from Canada's continual loose monetary policy, which will probably include some updates on the Chinese real estate market as we're set to get their January data as well. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into Evergrande. Well, we've talked about in many videos how Evergrande did in fact default on their offshore bonds. Offshore investors are getting increasingly impatient with Evergrande and have threatened legal action last week if they are not informed of, of how and when they are going to be paid. Offshore creditors just last week have threatened to uh, pursue enforcement actions, saying the restructuring process has been very opaque, um, they didn't have visibility. For its part, Evergrande responded to the threat by international investors by asking for more time and saying that any legal action would be extremely destructive. Read, those are some mighty fine assets you have there. It'd be a shame if something happened to them. Following Evergrande's comments, international investors shot back, noting that the behavior of not only Evergrande, but also of China, tarnishes offshore investors' views about expecting fair treatment when investing in Chinese companies. This really gets to the heart of the problem that China has on its hands right now. While it wants to keep domestic investors happy as it doesn't want a political problem, it also is very wary of international investors and how they are, and how they are viewing China's management of this crisis. As well, China is heavily, still continues to be he heavily uh, reliant on international funds, international investment into its market. It can't just ignore international investors and treat them however they want. China really depends on this money. And as we'll get to later with the Federal Reserve tightening and money going to be more expensive in the midst of a credit crunch in China, Mismanag mismanaging international investors' expectations, not making them as feel as though they've been heard, is going to present a continual problem for China. This was actually on full display on Monday as a state official was appointed to Evergrande's board to manage the restructuring. You'll work for me now. Following the appointment of the state official, there was a phone call scheduled between Evergrande and its international bondholders, where the company asked for six months more time to, 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 to work up a debt restructuring plan. One of the bondholders actually after the phone call noted that I believe the final decision making is led by the government. The company is relatively passive. He calls the shots, we do it. And I think this is a really, really important development from this from this bondholder who asked to to remain anonymous. As China is going to have to more and more manage the restructuring, the defaults of these massive massive real estate companies throughout China. We've talked about Shima, we've talked about Evergrande. As they as, as they have to continue to manage this throughout 2022 and maybe even the years ahead, it's going to become more and more of, it's going to become more and more apparent that it's Beijing calling the shots. It's not these companies, which depending on how you look at it could be a good thing or a bad thing. Beijing has much more clout on the international stage and is also much, much better financed. So depending on who you are, Beijing having its hands around this thing could either be a good thing or a bad thing. 
we'll see as, as time goes on. Speaking of Beijing having its hands around this crisis, for its part, the People's Bank of China lowered the one-year interest rate from 3.8 to 3.7 this week in an attempt to make mortgages more affordable as a means to enticing wary house, house buyers into re-entering the market. As we talked about before, there are millions who have seen their homes go unbuilt and obviously as a result, many are wary about entering into the market and we've seen Chinese property sales and Chinese property prices slump as a result. So when Beijing, when the People's Bank of China is lowering that rate down, it's really an effort, it's a test to see if how much, how much looser they need to make their monetary policy in order to entice borrowers back into the market. We'll give you so much more money. In addition to the rate cut, the People's Bank of China and the government have also been quietly encouraging the banks to lend out more, encouraging the banks to lend money to households and, and lend money to, to businesses in order to re-jumpstart this economy. This really is big news as, as, as we start to see that China is loosening its, its monetary policy and some are calling for it to, to do more as the year goes on. Well, the data has shown a massive drop in the price of Chinese homes and more predicted in 2022. The, the Chinese government does have its arms wrapped around this and it is going to continue to test to see how loose do they need to go to get people back into the market. On the other side of the world, we have the almost the other side of monetary policy. The Federal Reserve announced on Wednesday that it would be hiking interest rates in March. As we've discussed in many videos in multiple updates on the Chinese real estate crisis, this whole crisis really began due to a credit crunch. Due to, due to real estate developers, starting with Evergrande, being unable to access additional funds. With these real estate developers not being able to access much credit, they are going to have to turn more and more to international investors, which with a higher rate on for coming from the Federal Reserve, coming from Western Central Banks, these international investors are going to put even more pressure on these real estate developers by wanting a price premium. Give me some money! By one, because on the one hand, their money is much more expensive and there's much more risk coming out of China. So, news that the Federal Reserve was hiking rates is definitely not good for China's real estate investors as it just makes as it just makes access to money, access to credit even more expensive. So while we have China, while we have Beijing on the one hand lowering the price of money on the domestic front, any international capital is going to be more expensive going forward. So that's another dilemma that China that Beijing really has to really has to uh, has to grapple with as uh, well, they can lower they can lower rates as much as they want they can loosen their monetary policy as much as they want but with the federal reserve the biggest of the biggest economy in the world of the united states making access to international credit even more expensive a lot more pressure is going to be put on beijing to lo to loosen their policy and to get more money into the system but these rise uh, in borrowing costs from the west and combined with the evergrande's lack of transparency transparency lack of engagement with western investors is only going to is only going to push the price of credit the price of money up for these chinese real estate developers at a time when they need that the least so why does all this matter why, why does this matter to the west what's in it for us it matters because one way or another this crisis this property crisis in china is going to hit our shores as the cost of borrowing goes up, as these real estate developers continue to be a drag on the Chinese economy, the prices of goods in China are going to go up. As we import so many of our goods from China to the West, that pushes up our inflation rate at a time when we're trying to tamp it down. Paradoxically, higher borrowing costs in the West, in, in the United States, will lead to higher, higher borrowing costs in China, which will raise their inflation, which we buy those goods, raises our inflation, which leads to higher borrowing cost in the West. Full circle. Of course, this is all speculative for now. Uh, these higher rates aren't coming out until March, but we are expecting to see three, four, five rate hikes in short order within the next year in the West between the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve. The Bank of England has already raised their rates. So with this era of cheap money coming to an end, that's going to translate into into higher costs in China and at a time when they don't need them. Um, we will have updates as these as these monetary policies make their way through the West, make their way to China, and that obviously will reverberate back to the West as well. Globalization in 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 full view.
Um, click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. And thanks so much for watching.